All right. So we're going to go over an example of how to create a matrix sort of class in Python. So basically how to manage two dimensional matrices. So let's sort of define our problem here. Again, I want a class for a matrix. With that, I can have a couple of options of input. I can have a number, for example, one. I can have a list, for example, one, two, three. And I can have a list of lists with something like a list with the first element in the list being a list of one, two, three, second element being four, five, six, something like that. And again, I call this a list of lists. This I define as a scalar, just a numerical value. This I define as a vector, the list, and this is a matrix. So this is how I'm going to be able to represent them in Python, a scalar, a vector, and a matrix. So to represent a scalar, I'll just use a number. To represent a vector, I use a list, one, two, three. And to represent a matrix, I can use a list of lists, one, two, three, four, five, six, something like this. So really what we want here is we want to be able to deal with matrices. So something like one, two, three, or five, six we represent as just this list of lists where we have the outer list, that's the total matrix. Then each list in there is a row. So the first row is a list with each column separated with a comma. And then we have a comma, the second row. And so just one, two, three would still be a list of lists because this is the total matrix. This is the first row, one, two, three, like that, and so on. So we can see sort of how we represent mathematical stuff like this matrix or this vector. So matrix and vector and convert it to the Python. So now that we see exactly how we want to do those math things in Python. Let's go back. We defined what the inputs are going to be, but the next thing we want is the things we want to be able to do with this, and that'll be the operations. For the operations I want to be able to perform, I want to add. So I want to be able to do something like add one, two, one, two, three. I want to be able to add one, two, three to one. So a number to a list, a list to a number, a list to a list of the same size, a list of lists to a number, a number to a list of lists, and finally a list of lists to another list of lists of the same size. So these are basically all of my scenarios, right, of what my operations can be for addition. And my approach is going to be First, limit the scope. So what exactly do I want to accomplish with this class? I don't want it to be super complicated. I want to be able to just use it myself, be able to do matrix addition. Maybe I could add in multiplication later, but to limit the scope, that's all I'm going to deal with. Let's start with here. So only add to other instances of this class, basically just saying also in addition to just setting up adding between the lists. I only want to add to other instances of this class. So I'm not going to worry about adding a list to this class. I'm just going to add this class to another of its class to simplify it. Then I'm going to define the values. So one, I want to convert everything to a matrix that matches in form so I can understand when I'm doing the addition, how to handle it. So for example, with one, with just a number, I'm going to convert it to basically a two dimensional matrix form where it's just got a single value in there. So a list of lists, but it's just got a one in there. Then with a list, not a list of lists, I want to give it a list of that list. So it's just converting it again to the same form. And then third, I want to perform the operation. So just as I kind of examined before, I've got four cases. 
So what I looked at before, I kind of had a scalar to a list, a list to a scalar, and a list to a list with some combinations there. So I'll break this down into the three steps. And in the other scenario, it's not what I expect. So anything other than these three cases are wrong. So first is I add a number, just a single scalar value that's a list of lists to a list of lists. Then the second option is the list of lists to the scalar. Then third option is list of lists to list of lists. And I think I'll be able to approach this problem where I don't have to set up all these extra scenarios with just lists, not list of lists. So we'll see once I get into Python if I run into any problems there. So these are my four cases, scalar and matrix, matrix and scalar, matrix and matrix. So I either want them both the same size, or at least one of them to be a scalar, of course. Those are my options. And this, I want to add, what, what I actually want to do in this scenario is add the S to each thing in M. In this scenario, I again want to add this, the S to each thing in M, but it's just misordered. And here I want to add each place in M1 to the correct, the corresponding place in M2. And I'll just have the first one be M1, the second one be M2. So here we are. I'll hide my notes for now. And on the left, I've got the code that I'm going to write out for Python. And on the right, I'll actually run the code. So to actually do this, let's just call up a class matrix. And this will manage 2D matrices given scalars, lists, and lists of lists. And I'll say number just to simplify. So of course, I want to define the initialization of this class. So def init of self. And what sort of inputs do I have here? Well, if I look at my notes, basically, I've got a scalar, a vector, or a matrix. So just one of these, and that's like the value for my input. So I really just have the one input, the value, and then my self dot val is val. But I want to convert it because I basically have the three scenarios, right? If type of matrix, which is my input, let's just say val, or yeah, let's stick with val. So if type of val is type of a list, so one, two, three, for example, if this type matches the type of a list, then I know it's a list. So then I want to say if the type of thing in that list is a list again, then in this case, I know that it's a list of lists. So right here, I know that this list of lists is the scenario I'm facing inside both of these if statements. So when that's the case, I just want self.val to be val because that matches what I'm hoping for. And then let's look internally to here. But if this is not true, it means that it's a list, but not a list of lists. So else I want self.val to equal a list of val. So put what the val is, which is a list inside another list, just like we did over here, right? And if it's not even a list at all, then I'm going to assume it's a numerical value. So I'm going to say else and self dot val is a list inside a list of val. And I don't want to return anything for this init function, the method in this class matrix. So now I can go on. And I want to define what happens if this is added to another of its class. So 
if you add it to another matrix, so matrix two, again, I've kind of got my scenarios down here. This is what I think I might have to be dealing with. Either a scalar and a matrix, matrix and a scalar, or they're both matrices of the same size. So first I'll say matrix, matrix one is self dot val because of what I defined up here, because it's just this instance I feed in as self. So this instance of it, the class matrix has this value inside it. That's my list of lists. And it's either got a scalar, a vector or a matrix in there. So I also have a second matrix in here. So I want to say matrix two is matrix two dot val. And that's because I only care about the matrix. I don't need to look at any other information. Otherwise, I wouldn't want to override matrix two. And to make this easier, I could say matrix two is underscore matrix two dot val. And now nothing is overridden. So now in here, I want to add these two together. So first, I want to say if they're both the same size. And the way I can see this is if the length of matrix one equals the length of matrix two, but also and length of matrix one of zero is length of matrix two of zero. So if they're the same size here, and really we have another case scenario with this, and that's if these two are scalars, but this will work if it's a matrix or a scalar, right? So if length of matrix one and length of matrix two are one, and length of matrix one at zero and length of matrix two at zero are one, then we're good. So whether they're both matrices or both scalars, they match in size and I can just go through everything in the one matrix and add it to the other. So let's just say we're gonna start with out as matrix one, then for row in range of zero length of one. And then we want to go through the columns. So for col in range of zero length of matrix one. So out is currently matrix one. So I just want to add that when I go through every row and column. And this is of course going through every row and column because if I look in here, if we actually look at this matrix, we have a list of lists. And if when we do the first four row in range of zero length of matrix one, we'll get zero one, because we'll go through each thing in that list. And it'll first be zero, then one, and I'll stop wherever it gets the end because of the way range of zero length of matrix one works. It starts at zero and then it says stop at length of matrix one, which in this case is two. But because of range being from the starting point to one before the final point, then it'll actually stop before the two and just end at the one. So that's how we get our position in the rows for if this were to be a matrix according to our representation. That's how the rows work, right? Just like up here. So then we want to look at the first matrix one of zero here. And this is the columns because inside the row, we have column one, two, three. And once again, because of the way range is zero to length of this goes, we look at the length of the matrix inside the first row. And that's how many columns we got. And so it goes zero, one, two, all the way to the end. So this will get us through every row and every column starting at row zero, then column zero, one, two, in this example, and so on. So here we want to say out at row, because whatever the current value of row is, that'll give us the position for which row we're looking at. So first we'll look at row zero, and then we'll look at one, two, three, however many we got. Then I want to look at in that list, the column col ith element. So whatever the number is that COL is, that's which 
column we're looking at. So now we've looked at the specific column and the specific row, and we want to add that to the corresponding position in matrix two. So we can just do the same thing, matrix two of row and column. So this should now, if we ran this, if they were both the same size, it should make it so that out is a matrix that will again be the same size, but it'll just have matrix one plus matrix two in it. So at the end of this, at the end of add, I want to return out because that's what has the two matrices added together in it. So now that was if they are matching in size, what if matrix one is a scalar and matrix two is not. Then, if they were both a scalar, then they would be the same size. So we only need to check if matrix one is a scalar. So if they're the same size, they're not. So then we can go into an else if, and we say, okay, well, if length of matrix one is one and length of matrix one at the first position is also one. Scoot this over so it shows the colon. Then again, matrix one is a scalar, and because it's else if, we already know that they're not both scalars or they'd be the same size. So we want, say, out is matrix two. So we'll do sort of the same thing in here and go through matrix two. We'll just start out with matrix two, and then we'll go through every row and column in matrix two and add just matrix one to it, because matrix one isn't going to have a corresponding position matching. It'll just have the only value in it will be at zero, zero. So we can say for row in range of zero length of matrix two now, and then for column in range of zero length of matrix two of zero. So how many columns have we got in matrix two. Then we say out at row column and add matrix one is a scalar. So it should just have one value in it at zero, zero. So once again, I started out, out is the matrix, went through everything in the matrix with the four loops, and then updated at each point in there with the scalar value for matrix one. Now let's have another else if length of matrix two is one and length of matrix who of zero is one. So this is matrix two is a scalar and matrix one is not. Okay, there we are. So now we'll basically do the same thing as the last one, but we'll want to go through all the places in matrix one because matrix one is the matrix. So for row in range zero, then of matrix one, and then for col in range of zero, then of matrix one of zero, then out at the row column and add it to matrix two is the scalar, so it's only got one value at zero, zero. And this should be all of my scenarios now. They're matching in size, so either they're both scalars or both matrices that are the same size, then I can add them together. If this is matrix one is a scalar, matrix two is not, then I can add matrix one to each thing in matrix two, and I'll get it out. And otherwise, same thing, but if matrix two is the scalar, matrix one is not. So otherwise, I'm going to return none, because if it hasn't met any of these scenarios, then it's sort of a problem to me, because I don't know what to do to add two matrices together unless they're the same size or one of them is a scalar. So otherwise, I return none and return when I return from a function will immediately end it, right? But this will only return none if it fails each of these conditions because it's with an else. So if 
it isn't getting to the else, so it's returning none. I want to return out, right? And this should give me what I want. If uh, I'm thinking right about it and I didn't do any typos or anything, this should be able to add two matrices together. But in order to make sure it's actually doing that, we'll test it a few times. And first, we want to make it a little bit easier. So we'll define if we print it out or we convert it to a string, what does it do? And it should just return string of self dot val. Oh, one more thing. If we don't want, because when we add these, we probably want to get a matrix out. So instead of just out, we probably want to do matrix, which is our class. So we can create another instance of this class when we run this add function. It should return that matrix class with the input of out. Uh, because when we initialize the matrix, the input we want is the value. And so I can just do matrix of out, and that should work. So that's what I want to do with string. I might, for example, want to do the length of a matrix. Um, so if I do that, I can say, I can use the special method underscore underscore len underscore underscore. Once again, if you recall, these underscores mean they're special methods. The init add string length, it can be called up in specific ways. With length, I probably want to return the size of this. So, okay, and what I probably want to print out is basically how many rows, x how many columns. So, when I can do this, is f string so just make this a special string and inside the string we want to have use the curly braces to auto make it calculate because it's the f string but it's inside these curly braces so matrix sorry length of matrix will be the number of rows and then space x and then another curly braces for another calculation is the length of matrix of zero. So this should return the size of the matrix, basically, when I call up len of like this, if I did len of my matrix, it should return n by m, where n is the number of rows and n is the number of columns. So let's actually use this and see if it's working. So I'll create two matrices. Matrix one is matrix. And let's do the same one as before. Right over here, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And of course I need my parentheses. And I just needed the one input, right? Because self is the instance. So my first and only input here is val. And that should work if I give a list of lists. This is how I defined it. Now I could say matrix 2. And let's make it the same size. But some different values. So 3, 4, 5. And 1, 2, 3 here. And then let's do another matrix. And it's just a list. And final matrix of just a number. So let's see. First, if it can create all those without any issues. Let's clear and run matrices.py. So no errors, but it doesn't do anything, of course. And I could see matrix one, for example. When I print out matrix one, it should just print out the value inside matrix one. So now run this. I get one, two, three, four, five, six. So looks perfect. If I print out matrix three, I get a list of lists. So I successfully, when I initialized this instance of matrix in matrix three, I put this list in a list. And if I look at four, I put a numerical value in a list of lists. So with the inputs I'm expecting, Again, that's a limitation of the way we're doing it, is that 
we can only expect lists of lists, lists and numerical values. So if you want to make this more robust, you can, but this is what we're dealing with. So print out matrix four. Let's now go and print off the length of matrix four. Save that, run this, and we get an error, type error. Non-type object cannot be interpreted as an integer. And that's because we didn't return this string. So just to sort of walk you through some errors, type error is it's expecting, it needs a certain type of class there. So in this, it expects a integer. So that actually means that we returned an, we returned nothing from this basically because uh, not doing anything is the same as returning none from it. So if instead of this I returned none, I'll get the same error. So basically, it's just the problem is that it's uh, expecting an integer here. So if I try to return this string, it will give an error because it'll say type error string object cannot be interpreted as an integer so let's see that just to show you so type error string object cannot be interpreted as an integer of course so now if instead of that we don't use the special method len maybe we want to create our own specific method to this class and that's going to be size and it returns a string and now instead of len of matrix four, I can do matrix four dot size and call up that method. And then, oh, I don't have f string here, so it doesn't replace the curly braces. So now it does one by one because matrix four is one by one. If I did matrix one, it'll be two by three because two rows, three columns, just like we saw over here. This would be two rows, three columns. Just like that. One row, two row, one, two, three columns. So very nice. Now let's actually try and do the operation. So let's add matrix one plus matrix one. So I can add this to itself, right? That'll just make it easy because one, two, three, four, five, six to see if it's doing what it's supposed to. It should just basically double each of these. So if I say this, run this, let's see, I get another error. And so this is type error, object of type bool has no len. So let's see what that's saying. I can check, it says line 22. So in line 22, I'm getting if lan of matrix 1 equals lan of matrix 2 and lan of matrix 1. Oh, so right here, I forgot to include a parentheses, so it's having difficulty interpreting it. And you can see I also have an extra parentheses at the end here. So even though it shows a type error, it might just be that you put parentheses in the wrong place because with these parentheses in the wrong place, if I add it like this, it'll say a syntax error, invalid syntax, because it doesn't have the right number of parentheses. But where I have the right number of parentheses here, what it's doing, I can write out just this part. Len of matrix one of zero is len of matrix two of zero. And I'll space this out for clarity. So it's checking. Does matrix one at zero equal len of matrix two of zero? So it's checking if this item in the matrix is equal to a len type right here. So that's why it gave us the type error. Object of type bool has no len because when it checked if this len equals this, it'll get true or false. And then it's doing len of that true or false. So when it tries to do the length of a boolean, uh, it rightly assumes that is not what you're actually intending to do. So I'll fix this now. And we go on and check. 
and indeed it works great now. So because we're adding matrix one to matrix one, it'll just be two times matrix one basically. And it's, so two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, eight, 10, 12. So looks like it's working well. And I could try adding it to two, see if that works. One and three is four, four and two is six, five and three is eight and so on. It looks good. And if I tried to add it to a scalar, does this work? And it gives us a error. So type error, list indices must be integers or slices, not tuples. And that's because I fed in a tuple to the index because it's two things separated by a comma. So when I'm calling up something at a row column, I don't do row comma column in Python. I do bracket row, close bracket, and then another bracket. So take the list you made from here and then call up the element in that list with this. So run this and now let's see matrix four is one. So I should just add one to each of these. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I could try, if I wanted to add 11 to matrix three. Then 11 plus 1, 12, 11 plus 2, 13, 11 plus 3, 14. Perfect. And I could see if I did matrix 4 plus matrix 3 instead, I get the same thing. So it looks like we're good to go. And if I try to add 1 to 3, it'll give me matrices of different sizes. So what's going to happen? I'm going to get none because if it isn't either that they're both matching in size or one of them is a scalar, I return none, which is exactly what happens when I add matrix one and three together. So hopefully that makes sense. This is just an example of creating a class where it's basically a matrix to allow you to add matrices of two dimensions or lower like scalars and vectors together. So yeah, hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of you can accomplish this and hope you enjoyed watching thanks